So, so you know, there's a lot of people um, who out there looking for um, the next the next big thing. They're wait, wait, waiting to see one of these uh, old coins move and we really focused on a, a lot of other factors which make our products suitable, not only for, uh, you know, for the retail investor, uh, but also for the institutional investor. Um, you know, across Europe, who's who's looking for a, a certain kind of liquidity profile and exchange, um, and centrally clear pro products as well. The the ETC uh, group products are are unique um, in, in the way that they are structured, really with the investor security front and center. Uh, importantly, none of the the assets that are being held backing the securities are ever, you know lent out or sweated in any way um, so they they kept for the sole purposes the sole purpose of backing the 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 security and then you know offering the investors that protection so there's, there's, and that's that really is, a, is an important differentiator um, and changes entirely the risk profile from some of the other products out there where, where they, they are they are in fact lending them out bitcoin and ethereum are really really dominant um, and the others are you know feature in the, in the top let's say the top 20 uh, of, of the cryptocurrencies out there but um, it's definitely showing a, a maturing of the markets where people are now um, you know understanding the, the blockchains themselves, the nuance associated with, with them, and, and wanting, uh, wanting exposure to, to a broader range of products. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And if you own any crypto assets that are in the top tier by market cap, this is a great video for you. Who you just heard was the CEO and the co-founder of the ETC group, and they create crypto products, financial instruments to be exact, and they trade those across Europe's largest stock exchanges. Currently, they are trading in seven exchanges and they also just hit a big milestone they have now two billion under management their exchanges are spread out all over europe one in the uk one in switzerland two in amsterdam one in paris and two in germany the exchange that i want to focus on is this one here deutsch Bourse, and it's in frankfurt Three days ago, they launched GXRP, and like all their crypto products, 100% are backed with the physical digital asset. That's very important. You want to make an impact on the supply. Reducing supply makes for more demand. Those are the basic two ingredients for price movement. Now, let me just show you some of the other digital assets that they are focusing on in addition to XRP. XRP joins the company suite of ADA, Litecoin, DOT, Tezos, XLM, Uniswap, Polygon, Avalanche, Cosmos, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Solana, and Ethereum. So they custody the assets through a trustee. I did see that they use BitGo. And this way, people don't have to safeguard keys. They don't need to manage a wallet. It is a turnkey solution for those people who want that service. And yes, you are legally entitled to take custody, if you wish, at any time. This product is regulated under German law. As Bradley Duke said in the intro, as the market matures, there is a demand to have a broader exposure to digital assets, more than just BTC and Ethereum. And he also goes on to say in this press release that Ripple is rapidly becoming a leader in global payment systems with hundreds of financial institutions choosing Ripple to provide a better international payments experience for their customers in real time. By launching this latest ETC to our expanding portfolio of high quality, physically backed digital assets, we're continuing to grow our offering to investors, providing access to an increasingly wide range of digital currencies and assets, especially those amassing large 
market caps. The market leading success of our products has been driven by our partnerships with world class liquidity providers to deliver high liquidity and tight trading spreads. Now, I know this next portion of the video is going to be controversial, but I'm just delivering what we have in the key information document. These are performance scenarios, and I'm going to just give you the favorable scenario because you can imagine if it's not favorable, you've lost your money. But the favorable scenario with an investment of $10,000, there is an average yearly return that is calculated on one year, three years, and five years. In the one year, you can see that it has a 241% gain with a return of, uh, in US dollars here, 34,122. Your three-year investment, if you wait that long, in a favorable scenario, is expected to return 73468 So that has that annual average return of 94%. And for a five-year hold, you are going to have a return on a favorable scenario, according to their information document, a 63% annual average return or in US dollars, 116,420. I know probably many of you are thinking, wow, that's not the 589. Well, this is something that is being marketed in a conservative country to institutional investors and also uh, people who are not necessarily moonshots, right? <laughs> so, I, 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 I'm, I'm just positive there's going to be lots of comments about this portion of the video. But um, yeah, it is what it is, and I wanted to share it with you. All right, everybody, we're jumping to the fluff, and we're going to talk about Raggio Tyso, or I would say literally translated to radio gymnastics. <laughs> In all of the uh, schools and for most companies, the employees of the companies, and you'll even find many of the parks throughout the whole entire country. Every morning at 6.30 a.m., they listen to a public broadcast from NHK Radio, and it is a routine that everybody has memorized. It lasts for about 10 minutes, and it takes you through a set of these moves, all designed to be uh, done by anybody of any age, and it has the aim to improve your muscle strength. It began in 1928, and even this is Hamamatsu. This is like in the heart of Tokyo, just a couple of, of stops away from Ginza. Uh, even if you were in the early, early days, <laughs> you would find people leading uh, a routine in the station on the platform for people who have traveled for a long time and sitting down. It's really, it's now just become so ingrained in the culture. Uh, and let me show you a picture of Shinjuku Park just a couple of days ago. Here's Shinjuku Cohen and it uh, was taken on the 18th of this month at 6.38 a.m. And I would say this is not a really busy example. Uh, when I have gone, it is probably uh, five times the amount of people in the space like this. But I don't know, it might be the time of year because every time I have gone, it's been you know during really great weather. And some people chit chat after it's done. Some people just make it a part of their morning routine and then they see some friendly faces. It really does also drive a sense of community for these neighborhoods throughout the country. I think it's really a wonderful idea. I would love to see countries all over the world uh, adopt something like this. So uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I know that a lot of people um, in the week days are elderly, but the weekends are full of families. And I'm going to let the T-Rexes uh, take the video 
out for you. This is uh, Raggio Taiso in Tatori just a couple of days ago. I, they had these T-Rex races and before the races began, everyone took part in Raggio Taiso. Yeah, what a wacky country this is. Thank <laughs> you.